If you've seen my previous autonomous boat videos, then you'll know that they are pretty dang good at going really slow and in a near perfect straight line. This got me thinking that they would be a great platform to use for hyperlapses. If you don't know what a hyperlapse is, it's basically just a time lapse where the camera is moving. This gives the video a really cool effect that makes it look like the camera is shooting through time and space. Since my last autonomous boat nearly sank, I built a new one out of inch thick pink insulation foam, which is a great building material for these things because it makes them unsinkable. I used all the same electronics from the last boat which made the build pretty quick. This boat behaves quite a bit differently in the water than the last version, so I had to spend some time retuning all the autopilot parameters. All of my autonomous boats have used the Ardu Rover autopilot system. If you're interested in more info on that, go check out my previous autonomous boat videos. After I got it tuned in, I took it out in some rough water for some reliability testing. It seems to do really well. When waves break over the bow, the water just flows out of little holes in the back of the deck. It's so buoyant that the extra weight of the water on the deck doesn't really matter. It did have a problem with nose diving at full throttle because the motors are mounted so high up because of the big propellers. This was easily solved by moving the batteries further back, but it became problematic again when I started putting heavier cameras on the front. Now anyone who knows anything about hydrodynamics will tell you that this whole design is extremely inefficient. That's fine for this boat though, because it's never going to be going over 1 meter per second and it has enough battery capacity to drive for a few hours, which is more than enough. Now shooting a hyperlapse from a little boat is a big challenge because the camera needs to be kept perfectly still. In addition, I wanted to do all these hyperlapses at night to avoid collisions with other boats. And to take good photos at night, you need really long exposure times. Long exposure times makes it even more important to keep the camera perfectly still. Because of this, I had to mount the camera in a gimbal. I decided to go with the Freefly Movi, which is a smartphone stabilizer. I'm using a GoPro as the camera, so to fit the GoPro in the Movi I had to use this special adapter and glue some weights to the back of the tilt axis on the Movi to get it to balance properly. The extra weight of the gimbal on the front of the boat made it nosedive even more easily when at full throttle. Uh -oh. I got the idea that adding a foam bulge to the bottom of the hull on the front would help keep the front end up. I was also curious as to how this bulge would affect the efficiency, so I did a side-by-side -side comparison with and without the bulge. The bulge clearly reduced efficiency quite a bit. The boat used 37% more milliamp hours to go around the square than it did without the bulge installed. Now I probably should have been looking at watt hours consumed, but I didn't have that data visible on the ground control software at the time. But looking at milliamp hours is close enough. Before we get started on the hyperlapses, I'd like to thank Olight for sponsoring this video. A lot of the hyperlapses you'll see were done really early in the morning, so I needed a headlamp I could rely on. Olight's new Perrin headlamp was up for the task. With a 2000 lumen output, high speed magnetic charging plug, and infrared distance based brightness control, it's one of the most advanced headlamps on the market. Its compact and durable form factor make it convenient to use both as a flashlight and a headlamp. It simply magnets onto the headband and is secured with a rubber strap to use on your head. It also has a steel clip so that you can attach it to anything else. From December 16th through 19th, almost everything on the site is 20 to 40% off. All customers can get a free i3e just by registering or logging into their account. The Perrin headlamp is 20 to 40% off during December 16th through 17th. My first few tests did not go very well. I had the Movi in majestic mode, which is where the camera follows the handle position, but more smoothly. The time lapse looked shaky because the position of the pan axis was riding on the edge of the dead band. The dead band is the range of motion in the center where the gimbal totally stabilizes out all the movement and the camera stays perfectly still. Once you get to the edge of the dead band, the gimbal starts to move again. To fix this, I tried increasing the size of the dead band, or the window as it's called in the app. This also didn't really work and it didn't seem that it was just hitting the edge of the dead band like I previously thought. I then consulted with my pal Ethan who wrote a lot of the software in the Mobi, and he said the disturbances I was seeing could be because of a setting called Drift Assist that is used to eliminate IMU drift by integrating the encoder positions to better estimate heading when the gimbal is not moving. Drift Assist was probably causing problems in this scenario because the boat was stable enough to trick the gimbal into thinking that it was not moving and therefore causing it to use the encoders to maintain at the camera position. After turning it off, the video looked perfect when the boat was in smooth water but it would still hit the end of the majestic dead band when the boat would turn too much. You can see this in effect here, when the bridge blocks the GPS signal and the boat momentarily starts to wander. The dead band then maxes out and the video gets messed up.
After that, I tried using Smart Pod Mode instead of Majestic Mode. Smart Pod Mode basically turns the Movi into a tripod head where you can position the camera by hand, and it stays there. The idea here is that the camera would stay still until the boat turns around. At that point, the gimbal's pan axis bumps into the hard stop, causing the gimbal to turn with the boat. This only really worked in straight lines driving away from yourself. Once the boat turned around, you had very little control of where the camera was pointed. Next, I tried setting the gimbal to slowly pan to the left, just slow enough to not mess up the long exposures. This allows me to plan a waypoint mission with only left turns, so that the gimbal never hits the end stop. The trick is to match the length of the missions with the pan rate of the camera, so that the boat roughly turns with the camera. It's not a perfect solution, but the resulting hyperlapses were pretty close to what I initially was going for. Team escort boats are circling it now. Oh, don't touch it. Oh, good. Looks like they're driving away. I also installed the Insta360X on a pull mount for some cool third person view. I was surprised at how well a 360 cam worked for long exposures. I set the Insta360X in interval photo mode, and then compiled all the photos into a time-lapse video in post. Overall, I'm really happy with how these hyperlapses turned out, but I'm also really glad this project is finished, because waking up at 3 a.m. is brutal. Thanks for watching, bye. I'm just uh, putting bad ground only brand lipos in my autonomous boat here. And my biggest concern right now is that we're gonna get hit by a boat, because there's a lot of, despite the fact that it's 30 degrees outside and nighttime. There's still, for some reason, a lot of boats going through here. This is our laptop ground station here. Got it for $100 on eBay. Plugging in the RFD 900X. Look, it's one letter away from anus. So I kind of want it to go out into the lake and then back, so it has like a nice straight shot. I'm trying to stay on the, the right side of the Mont Lake cut. So I'm pretty close to the wall, and I'm hoping that it's not too close to the wall. Should we launch it? Let's launch it. Oh, I gotta turn on the... There we go. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, it's not going the right way. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why, why, why? Go that way. Turn right. That's, that's not the right direction. <laughs> it'll go, it'll turn. Focus! Oh, goddammit. Focus, you focus. It's doing it. It's doing a time lapse. That's great. Yeah. It was. It's not pointing forward, but it's okay. Focus. Focus, you fuck. It's 
working. Yay. Oh, God damn, that would have been cool if it focused. That said, this camera is amazing at low light. It'll be interesting to see how the GPS does when it goes under this bridge. The boat is literally about to drive underneath a traffic jam. <laughs> okay, there's a big boat coming and I need to quickly move my boat. Uh, let's see, item, go to point, go over, move, move out of the way. <laughs> oh geez, I hope it moves fast enough. Oh, I hope I don't hit that buoy too. This is like a big ass ship that's coming. Come on little boat, move, move faster. <laughs> I think we'll be fine. Damn, that's a big boat. Great, I successfully avoided the boat. All right, I don't see any more boats coming, so I'm gonna grab my stuff and run to the other side of the bridge. There it is, coming home. That was a pretty successful mission, I'd say. Look at these boats. Wow. Uh-oh, looks like we might have another encounter. No, don't chase it. Bad boat. Oh no, this could be bad. So it kind of looks like it sort of prevents it. No, no, it doesn't prevent it from nose diving. It's still nose diving. <laughs> to get it to nose dive right there, I have a third nine amp hour six cell battery on the top where the gimbal would normally go. So that's why it's nose diving. It's 325 in the morning and we're doing Mont Lake cut take two. This time I've got a better GPS mounted in a better location. The old one was like right under the Movi right here. So definitely not ideal. And I also put a more visible light on the top to help avoid collisions. I don't know exactly what that is, but I think it's a muskrat. I don't think beavers live here. So this time I've got an FPV camera right here and an FPV transmitter over here. In the past I've avoided putting FPV on these boats because they've always been really risky missions. But I guess with an expensive GoPro on the front, I can't really use that excuse anymore. The idea there is that I can use the FPV camera to aim the gimbal so that it's pointing forward by kind of manually turning the boat. It's now six in the morning, we got traffic. Yeah, I gotta do this earlier. And my little boat is way over there, do you see it? Right in the middle of the frame. I'm a little concerned right now because my voltage just dropped from like 23-ish to like 21.2, what seems to be abnormally quickly, so <laughs> I hope it makes it back. I just launched the boat, it's heading towards the I-5 bridge. I'm in the car driving now, I don't know how I'm still getting signal on the RFD 900X telemetry. The water's pretty choppy. I don't know if this will make good video. I don't know if the camera's gonna be stabilized very well. 